We have a Raw here, ladies and gentlemen, and as I look at the last three weeks of Raw, I really haven't been very interested in seeing Hell in a Cell. Yeah, seeing Brock Lesnar go against The Undertaker, I am mostly interested because this is the last match of the entire series between them. I, that, that's the reason I care the most about. The rest of things that have been going on, I really don't care that much. And I am, I'll admit, I have been off because of the, the pain I've been having in my shoulder. And I have been not myself for the last couple of weeks. I've been very frustrated and more depressed than normal. <laughs> but it, it has not been easy watching these Raws. There's been a lot of filler that have not interested me. And let's look at this Raw together. And you guys tell me below what I could have been more interested in. The opening of the show with Dean and the wonderful Randall Keith Orton didn't interest me that much. I mean, I understand they're going to have a match at Hell in a Cell. We're going to see this. Which I think this match really makes no sense. They should have ended the feud between the Wyatts and the Mini Shield a while ago. And they dragged this out so long and then threw Randy Ke Randall Keith Orton into it didn't make it any better. The only thing that saved this entire segment was New Day. And you guys know how I feel about New Day. Guys who are highly entertaining with a terrible gimmick. But they made it work for me. And I'm going to be honest here. I didn't expect Kopi to win here. I didn't expect Kopi to actually get to pin over Randall Keith Orton. Because of Orton, Kopi, who should have won one time the WWE's Heavyweight Championship. I mean... Well, it was the World Heavyweight Championship, but it's basically the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, then the mid card belt. He had his shot, and it was taken from him because Orton got pissed at him because of one match. Now you see him actually jobbing for Kopi. Holy fuck. I actually had to look at it a couple of times because I wasn't able to see it that day. I was in a lot of pain. So, I'm going like... Am I, am I seeing what I'm seeing? Did they actually throw Kopi a bone here? Because Randall Keith Orton has always fucked over Kopi or they never even seen each other. Kopi's been mid-card hell, so I was shocked to see that he won a match over Randall Keith Orton, even if it was a tag match, for goodness sake. But I still don't have a very good interest going into Hell in a Cell, even though I do want to see New Day going against the Dudley Boys. Now, here's something I didn't really care about at all. Dudley's, since they're involved in this, versus the Ascension. I would have liked to hear a promo segment from the Dudley's more than a match from the Dudley's. Because Bubba Ray and Devon always can talk pretty well. I think it would have been better for them to talk than actually have a match. That's how I feel. And then seeing Connor and Victor get their ass handed to him really didn't make me happy. Another thing I didn't need to see, Ryback versus Rusev. I mean, it's understandable for Ryback. Ryback is going into a match against Kevin Owens and Hell in a Cell. And I understand Kevin Owens beating the crap out of Lucha Dragon. And Callisto, what was his name? Callisto, it was understandable he had to kick his ass. And I'm, I'm not talking about that. But here I felt like Ryback could have used another opponent. Because of what's going on with Rusev. Dealing with Summer Rain and Lana. Now that Lana actually has gotten leg legally and actually engaged to Rusev. I'm hoping to end this between Rusev, Lana, and Summer Rae. I really hope it's over, which I know it's not going to be. Seeing Summer Rae's little bit didn't really interest me much. No Lana, because she hurt her hand. There's nothing there. I mean, they tried. And I'm not bashing Rusev completely. I'm not bashing Summer Rae completely. Let's be honest. They're working with little bit of material. They don't have the woman that is the most interesting of the entire bunch. And that's Lana. Everybody wants Lana. So they work with what they got. And I'm wishing that this would be over. But I don't believe it is. And that kind of leads me into the first hour of the night, I believe. Or it was the second hour with John Cena. A part of me was hoping that someone in the crowd would start yelling for Nikki Bella. Bring out Nikki or you're screwing Nikki or some kind of crap. 
when it came between Dolph and John Cena. Because let's be honest, Total Diva is showing Dolph Ziggler. They haven't shown anything since that last episode. I did see it. I'm not a big fan of the Bellas. I care about Naomi. I care about Tamina. I even care about what happened with Natalia and Tyson. Those are the ones I care about. Natalia and Tyson and Naomi. Those are the only ones I care about. I don't give a damn about a page. I don't give a damn about Alicia. Unless that one episode a couple of times before that was talking about Naomi. That was it. But you have an opportunity to get some real heat on a Dolph Ziggler, some real pops on a John Cena, and some real in-between when it comes to a Nikki Bella. Now, I'm saying this for Nikki Bella fans, and I'm sure you guys are probably saying, shit, I don't see anything great from Nikki. And I know you guys, if you love the Bellas, you're going to say, look what's going on. Nikki won her match, and Brie won her match, but let's be honest here. Wouldn't you like to see a real storyline for Nikki Bella? Really? Having her real-life boyfriend with a former real-life boyfriend, and even though they probably settled the shit already, you could have made a real storyline out of it, kind of like what happened with Matt Hardy, Edge, and Lita. You could have gone down that route, WWE, but what? John Cena didn't want to get that involved in his real life? Come on. John's life is a, bit, a big story as it is. He's Superman now. So Superman has to have a Lois Lane, and then there has to be a Lex Luthor. Who wins? We already know. But let's move on to the Divas. <sighs> Breathe. Nikki Bella versus and Naomi angered the fuck out of me because this was all about Sasha Banks. I'm not hating Sasha. Sasha has great talent. She has great ability. She can talk. She works well in the ring. People like her. But as I said in one of my reviews of who will be first amongst Team Bad to get anything, it's going to be Sasha Banks because of this. Because of this. She's lighter than both of their fucking asses. And I'm not being nasty to Mina and nasty to Naomi. I'm freaking angry that the beautiful Naomi and the damn wonderful Tamina, even if you don't believe they deserve it because you don't think they have great talent, deserve to get a freaking shot at the title and actually get it. Because everybody and their mother has gotten that freaking title. I'm sorry. Paige got that freaking title on the first day she showed up on Raw. How come Naomi can't get it? And everyone keeps talking about Naomi. Saying she's the most athletic women, woman. You see I'm botching because it makes me angry. <sighs> Nicole Bell, I know you've been screaming and yelling at your television and your cable box saying, Why the hell isn't Naomi getting over? This was freaking stupid. And then Bree screaming, Let's go Sasha to piss off Naomi. Legitimately, if this keeps up, they do this more, you're going to have Sasha Banks against Naomi. Are you seriously trying to go down that route? I'm not saying now. But you may actually consider it. Because Naomi has the biggest gripe out of anyone. She had a match that had to go with Na with, between Naomi and Nikki Bella. And it was thrown out because of a what? A battle royal, which should never happen. Storyline-wise, Naomi is the perfect person to get freaking angry and turn on a Sasha Banks. And I have a feeling that one day they're going to do it. Because look what they did with Paige and Charlotte. Wouldn't it be wonderful if a Sasha has to have a first challenger who is a weak Naomi because they're not willing to push her because she actually has talent. She's talking better, like a Nikki Bella for Nikki Bella fans. Her ability in the ring has even improved more better than Nikki Bella. I'm sorry. Nikki Bella has improved. But Naomi is a better wrestler than she is. She's a high-flying wrestler who does good grappling. Nikki Bella's not a high-flying wrestler. I'm sorry, she just isn't. So this was stupid. Then, worse yet, tag match. The other half of Bella versus what was left over PCB. And what happens? Bella's win again. What is the point of this? 
Why do you have the Divas Revolution if there's nothing going on in the revolution? I don't see anything going on for these women. I feel so sorry for them. They're putting on good matches. Even the Bellas are putting on good matches. But what do we have here? We have one woman who's on top, which is Nikki Bella, who's basically dead because of John Cena. No matter if he's actually telling Vince, let my woman get everything and fuck everybody else, or just because she's with him. And no one's talking about it, but just by association, the bell is on top because of association. This is what I believe personally. It's not just because the men are just telling Vince and Stephanie and Paul, hey, make our women good. Let our women have it and fuck everybody else. I believe it's by association mainly. That's what I believe. But you guys tell me below. Huh. Cesaro Neville versus the UK. Now that's kind of saying a little bit because Neville is from the UK himself. But I would love to see Bad News Barrett drop the King Barrett shit and Seamus drop the money in the bank and do what they did uh, many, many years ago and do the monarchy. I believe F.U. Ashley was the one who talked about it. For me personally, that's when I saw her. She's a long time ago. And if I remember correctly, she's currently with the Sleg Daddy. Good luck, Mr. Sleg Daddy. You've done well. She was a beautiful woman. That's if I'm right. <laughs> but I would love to see the reformation of the monarchy when it comes to Barrett and Seamus. I know also Drew McIntyre was in that. Well, as Drew Galloway in his real life. But... Come on, it would be good. It was good to see them win, but they don't have anything. These two look like it could actually work together. They face each other so many times. Why not work as an actual cohesive tag team? It'll give us something new. Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman. Here's the thing about this. Roman, and it wasn't about the match for me personally. It was about the promo segment. People still don't fully get over with Roman, and Roman doesn't fully get over with the people. And they gave him a lot of lines to study because at one point he froze like this and started talking again. The man had so much lines, he froze. He freaking froze. Sometimes I think the WWE should let these people shoot from the hip. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And in this case, Roman just froze. And that made people say, this is boring. Now, he finally stepped it up and realized he screwed up. And he recovered some of it. But when it really comes down to it, Roman in this situation is screwed up. Because when it really comes down to it, Roman Reigns needs to end this situation. He needs to end it. The Wyatts together with the mini shield needs to end. Because this is really killing Roman's momentum as a face. It really is. Unless they're going to throw him back to a heel. I don't see anything good for him. Because honestly I guess the best option for him is either face Dean Ambrose and Dean being a heel. Or Roman turning heel and going after Dean. Because I don't see anything good for him. The match itself is not the problem here. The problem with the match wasn't that it wasn't good match quality, it's because we've seen so many times these guys touch so much. Dean touching Luke. Luke touching Dean. Bray touching Dean. Roman Reigns touching Dean. Braun Strowman touching both of them along with Randy Orton. Too much touching that should have just kept them separated. They oversaturate the touching and the matches and now I don't care anymore. I just don't care. Unless they're actually going to be in a Hell in a Cell. And I'm talking about Roman Reigns and the Bray Wyatt inside a Hell in a Cell cage. I'm not going to care if this is just a regular match. I'm sorry. But my guess is it's going to be an actual Hell in a Cell match. Now, what else do we have here? If I'm forgetting thing, I'm sorry. I am not myself. I'm just going to talk about what happened with Kane and Seth Rollins. Am I interested in Kane? To a point, yes. He's still making it a bit funny. But do I want to see Kane as WWE Champion? I mean, WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Honestly, no. 
even though he's doing a decent job. And this looks like the old 90s Kane. The match of the Lumberjack match was good. At least until the end when it became a clusterfuck. Corporate Kane is a bit funny. Was it great funny? No. Was it a little funny? Pretty much. But when it really comes down to when you see the end match of the entire show, why do you care about the pay-per-view now? When it comes down to it, we just saw Kane beat Seth Rollins with a tombstone pile driver. Why do you need to watch the pay-per-view now? With two weeks left, you decide to let Kane tombstone pile drive Seth Rollins in the middle of the ring after a whole big clusterfuck fight from the Lumberjack match. Are you serious? This just destroyed Kane's credibility and build up. This just destroyed Seth Rollins build up into that match. Why are you going to care? And this is what the WWE has done. They really had made these three shows, these last three weeks, not really careable. And even though there's been a few things in each show that I did like, I still don't care about Hell in a Cell except for Brock Lesnar and, and, and The Undertaker. And even then, we didn't see Brock Lesnar and we definitely didn't see The Undertaker. We saw two promos that we've seen weeks before. So they really haven't given me anything good to care about. But this is just me. How about you? And I hope you enjoyed the Zane view. Please give me a comment below. I am very sorry about last week for not doing my Raw review and my TNA review. I've been in a lot of pain. My neck and my shoulder has been pretty jacked. And I really do believe it's because of my stress level. I've been going through a lot of stress lately and it's made my depression a little bit more potent than normal. And I've been working through it. It has not been easy. And I really do apologize for not doing any videos. But if I'm in a lot of pain, I just, I can't get motivated like I normally do. So I hope you do like this. You guys have a good day and have a good night. Peace! Ah!